to worship at St. Mary by the Sea today. Today we carry on with Jesus' teaching on the Beatitudes. Let us journey together by by green green pastures pastures and and still waters. Let us journey together as we walk through the valley of shadow. Let us journey together with the one who knows our name. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Shout the message, don't hold back. Say to my people Israel, your sins you have turned against the Lord. Day after day you worship him and seem eager to learn his teachings. You act like a nation that wants to do right by obeying his lords. You ask him about justice and you say you enjoy worshipping the Lord. 
You wonder why the Lord pays no attention when you go without eating and act humble. But on those same days that you give up eating, you think only of yourselves and abuse your workers. You get angry and ready to fight. No wonder God won't listen to your prayers. Do you think the Lord wants you to give up eating to act humble as a bent over bush or to dress in sackcloth and certain ashes? Is this really what he wants on the day of worship? I'll tell you what it really means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor and homeless. Give clothes to those in need. Don't turn away your relatives. Then your light will shine like the dawning sun and you will quickly be healed. Your honesty will protect you as you advance and the glory of the Lord will defend you from behind. When you beg the Lord for help, he will answer, here I am. Don't mistreat others or falsely accuse them or say something cruel. Give your food to the hungry and care for the homeless. Then your light will shine in the dark of your darkest hour will be like the noonday sun. The Lord will always guide you and provide good things to eat. When you are in the desert, he will make you healthy. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water or like a stream that never runs dry. You will rebuild those houses left in ruins for years. You will be known as a builder and a repairer of the city walls and streets. Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 20 You are like the salt for everyone on earth, but if salt no longer tastes like salt, how can it make food salty? All it is good for is to be thrown out and walked on. You are like the light for the whole world. A city built on top of a hill cannot be hidden, and no one would light a lamp and put it under a clay pot. A lamp is placed on a lampstand where it can give light to everyone in the house. Make your light shine so that others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. Don't suppose that I come to do away with the law and the prophets. I do not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. Heaven and earth may disappear, but I promise you that not even a period or comma will ever disappear from the law. Everything written in it must happen. If you reject even the least important command in the law and teach others to do the same, you will be the least important person in the kingdom of heaven. But if you obey and teach others its commands, you will have an important place in the kingdom. You must obey God's commands better than the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord obey them. If you don't, I promise you that you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. This week we carry on with Jesus' teaching on discipleship. Some people call it the Sermon on the Mount, but it's so much more than a sermon. It isn't just nice advice that we choose to take on or discard. Rather, it's Jesus' blueprint for what a disciple looks like. Last week we heard the Beatitudes, and straight after the sayings of those who are blessed, Jesus goes on to say, You are salt of the earth, and you are light to the world. And the same word you used here is the same word you used in the Beatitudes. So I think Jesus means us to link the two things together. So being salt and light to the world isn't some form of arbitrary set of guidelines which we might think, I wonder if it's this or it's that. It isn't whatever we might want it to be. Rather, Jesus is referring to the Beatitudes. Another way of phrasing it might be to say, we are salt to the world when we live the Beatitudes, and likewise, we are light to the world when we live the Beatitudes. Jesus then goes on to say, if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. So how do we ensure that we're not trampled under God's foot? I think it's important to stress that this isn't the way of God. We're not going to be trampled under God's foot. Up until this point in history, God's call on Israel was for them to be salt to the world. And Jerusalem 
was meant to be a light to all nations. And God's hope was that they would follow this call. And when they didn't, God sent them prophets to tell them to repent, to turn back to God's ways, and to be God's salt and light to the world. This call, though, was constantly ignored. You might say that eventually they lost their saltiness. So wouldn't we think then that it would be time to be trampled by God? But no, this is not God's way. Rather, God came to us in Jesus, and through the cross, through Jesus dying and being resurrected, we are restored to God. So there's this restoration that happens of the saltiness in us. Or at least there is if we're willing to repent and to allow ourselves to be made salty again. Another way might be to say that the light of God shines again into our lives. And the beauty of us comes through. We see things. And others see things that maybe we've long forgotten. It's important to stress that while trampling on things that aren't working, might be our way, it's not the way of God. Rather, God came to restore our light, to renew our saltiness. And the challenge to us from Jesus today is to be that salt, to be the light, to follow his teachings, to live the Beatitudes, which are essentially a rephrasing of God's law. And as we do this, we become like the light, not a small light on the floor, but a light lifted up on a stand. If we take the example of salt too, then we can think of different kinds of salt, can't we? There's rock salt, there's flaky sea salt, there's iodized table salt, you can even buy flavoured salts. The important thing isn't so much to be salt, but rather what the salt achieves. Sometimes salt's used to preserve things for later use. Salt also enhances flavour. It improves our hydration. It cleanses. But like all things, too much is not a good thing. Jesus is saying to us we need to be like salt. Not actual salt, but like salt. Light is similar. Light makes things grow. It helps us to find our way in the dark. It guides ships and harbours. And when we think about it, the tiniest amount of light has a huge effect in the dark. The flicker of a tiny flame banishes darkness, doesn't it? A small light on a headland makes a safe passage for anything from small boats through to large ships. A tiny amount of salt brings out flavour in our food. Salt and light, they were Old Testament symbols for the Old Testament law. And a tiny amount of law would allow creation to flourish. And the Pharisees, wanting people to keep the law, to keep the salt. But they differed from Jesus though, in what then happened. Jesus' intent was the heart of the people. Were they able to be like salt? Were they able to be like light? What would their actions look like? To Jesus, the actions of someone showed whether or not they were salty, whether they were keeping the law, because the heart and the intent of the law was what was important. Jesus had run up against Pharisees and Sadducees. They were saying that we need to be obedient. We need to do this and that. We need to be obedient to the law. Being obedient was what counted. Towing the party line was what was necessary. And the infuriating thing for the Pharisees and the Sadducees was that Jesus didn't do this. He didn't tow the party line. He wasn't obedient. And while he didn't teach against the law, he showed us what it looks like to live that law in action. He showed us what the actions look like of someone who lives the intent and spirit of the law. 
And of course, the Pharisees and the Sadducees couldn't try him. They couldn't convict him of anything. They couldn't really have him on because he kept to the intent, if not always, the letter of the law. The call from Jesus has always been to stick to the heart of the law. And our reading from Isaiah that we've also heard is a classic case of where the law went wrong. The Israelites got carried away into captivity in Babylon and they could no longer offer sacrifices. They were oppressed. They were held down. So wanting to stay in relationship with God and not wanting to jeopardize this, they continued. Only now they would fast rather than sacrifice. So they would go without food rather than sacrificing food. And it made sense because they couldn't afford sacrifices when they were oppressed in Babylon. But then they moved back to Jerusalem and the tradition of fasting continued. Now, sacrifices cost a lot of money. It had an impact on the family. And people had become comfortable with the tradition of fasting. It was easy. It only required a small inward journey. So Isaiah challenges them and says the law is rubbish, it doesn't work, it serves your own vain purposes of sitting in ash and sackcloth so that people know what you're doing. God doesn't require this, Isaiah says. God requires genuineness. God requires us, in Isaiah's words, to, to loose the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free, to share your bread with the hungry, to undo the thongs of the yoke and to break every yoke, and to bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see the naked, to cover them, and to not hide yourself from your own kin and family. Isaiah sees our sacrifice as a life that lives the way of God, and helps others to do the same. The problem is the people stuck with fasting, and while it made sense when they were oppressed, it no longer served a God purpose for them. They were now in a wealthy position. It was now their call to help others. And Jesus shows them what justice looks like. And it's scary because he kept the intent and the actions of the law rather than just the words. This meant that things were changing. Today we are called to fulfill the ancient call that God has placed within us to be true to God's law and to make sure that we loose the bonds of injustice, undo people's burdens, share our food, house and close the poor. This requires actions that work to fill, fulfill the intent of the law, not just the words. And we are left wondering then, what kind of salt are we? Are we nurturing our lives in a way that we may be used as salt and light in God's mission? The heart of the gospel today is, well, what does our heart look like? What do our actions look like? We remember that God has a big role in this too, and that one of God's questions to us today is, what do you want my salt and light to restore in you today? Let us pray. Creator God, you call us to be salt, adding flavour to your creation. You call us to be light, illuminating and restoring beauty. Give us courage to respond so that your presence may be revealed through all of creation. Amen.
we pray in silence for those things and those people on our mind. Now, as Jesus taught us, we pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, who gives life to all things and richly provides us with everything we need, grant us all godliness combined with contentment. Through the love of Christ, the blessed and only Sovereign, may we be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
May we take hold of the life that really is life, the life of righteousness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.